Hello everybody and welcome to Boss Mode. Would you kindly put down whatever it is you may be doing because you are now listening to the gaming podcast known as Boss Mode. These are your hosts. We have Valentino Hansen. What's up guys? DJ Hamback. Oh, yeah. And Jared yeah. Todd. So, uh, Valentino, what's the latest in your world of gaming? Well, um, after that tragic event that happened mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago, I, um, kind of been falling off of, uh, Mankind Divided, but, um, you know, I, I've been, I've been picking up, I've been playing a lot of multiplayer lately, and I think I already Ooh. told you all about King of the Kill, but, um, I've recently jumped back into Overwatch. Really? Yeah. How's they, that going? Who are you maining? Um, I'm learning. I'm learning Road Roadhog. I was about to say Road Dog. I'm learning um, Roadhog right now. Okay. He, he's like fantastic. Like he, he's a very easy character. The difficulty is like it's like right there, but it's like, yeah. it's like very low. But um, yeah, I just I love the hook, man. I mean, like mm. when we get when they give you the I forgot the map name, but like the one where it has a big hole in the middle. All you do is just road hog, just hook people over and they just fall in the hole. Unless, of course, it's like Lucio, then they can just get out of there. Yeah. But, like, yeah, it's great. He's such a troll character because it's like you just hook people and then shoot them. Because he doesn't really, he's a tank, but he's like a, a, a not a, your typical tank. Like, he doesn't defend other people. He's just some big fat dude that messes people up. Okay. It's, it's great. And um, I got. I keep getting the same Halloween skin. It keeps giving me the Demon Hanzo skin. I yeah. don't play Hanzo. I play, like, I have a, a couple characters I play, but it keeps giving me the Hanzo skin. And it's like, stop. Please stop giving me that skin. I don't want it! Mm. And, um, but yeah, yeah, I recently hopped back into uh, Overwatch, and All right. that's about that. Alright, very cool. What are you, DJ? What have you been doing? Oh, oh. <laughs> He's so funny. Oh, man. Uh, that's cool, that's cool. I have recently, in honor of Halloween, been playing a lot of the, you know, the free games you can download that made are made through RPG Maker. <laughs> um, stuff like Ao Oni. Um, kind of very Japanese. Most of them are made by Japanese developers. Independent, very independent developers. These are free games. So they're not making any money off of this, but it's really cool to see a lot of the detail that goes into these labors of love. Um, what have I played? The, the Witch's House. Uh, me and my girlfriend have played The Witch's House, and she's scared of anything, so this is, it's, it's pretty fun. Um, honestly, like, you go, okay, there's one part where you just walk in and the walls just come in and smash you, oh. smash you dead, blood everywhere. And the fact that you can get something this cool and dynamic with RPG Maker is actually really impressive. Um, I've got The Witch's House, um, we started the Crooked Man um, series, which is the Crooked Man, the Sandman, and then the third one, which I, I don't know yet. We're on the Sandman. We've beaten the Crooked Man. Man, these, are, these, these games sound really nice. I like the titles. Yeah. They, they are sound very classical, like classical horror titles. Yes, it is very classical horror. Don't go into it expecting too much. It is RPG Maker. But oh, yeah. honestly, and the dialogue is going to be a little bit iffy, but we just like making fun of it. And the choices, if the authors of any of them listening right now, stop it. Stop making me follow your weird, twisted mental gymnastic logic to get these choices for the good endings. I, I, I sometimes I look at them online and be like, why did I get the bad ending? I made all the good choices. But like, nah, ha, really by helping this man, you hinder him in some twisted sort of way. And I'll only write you the essay of why this is the way it is. Mm -mm, stop that. But your games are great, honestly. I, can, I really can't say anything because, I mean, I couldn't make a game of that caliber, honestly, with the tools that you used, with the limited tools that you used to make an actually very not limited product, which is really cool. So you guys should get hired somewhere, but stop it with the choices. <laughs> have you ever stop played, it. Have you ever played Cry of Fear? No, I haven't, and that should be next on the list. Dude, I played that game with a bunch of my buddies online. It's, it's, it's like... It's really good. Like it's like one of those games. Like when you were younger, it was scary, but now you go back and it's like it's so hilarious. It's so crazy. Like basically, you're these po police officers and uh -huh. you're trying to find like this kid and you just go through the levels. And it's just it's such it's an it's an old game, but it's like it's 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 so good. Like me, you, and David gotta play it sometime. Okay. And yeah. like the, the the ridiculous like enemies and stuff. And I just we were just like basically spamming the um the sounds like cause like um I forgot the button, but it's like. They say different things like, and it's basically like, to it's basically what you commands for the other players. Like one of them is like, help, 
I need some help over here. And that's all they say. It's like help. So help. It's, and, it's multiplayer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Cool. All and right. That, and it's, it's so it's so it's so dopey. It's so dopey now. But it's like, oh man, back in the day, this was sometimes like a horror game. Honestly, that can be part of the charm. Yeah, let's yeah move, exactly. Let's move on to the what's going the latest in the world of gaming on a broader scale. So, fans of the wild wild west. We'll get another shot at it in Red Dead Redemption 2, oh, which yes. has been uh, which has been announced to be in development. I'm not sure on the release date or the title. There was actually a Twitter thing. Uh, some uh, one of the developers was saying, "Hey, what should we name our game?" And oh gosh, rolling Red through, Dead Redemption 2. Rolling through some of those suggestions, though, man, <laughs> you you lose hope for the world pretty fast. Um, also, Skyrim is set to release on the 28th, the remastered version, uh, which features. Among other things, better lighting, um, a 64-bit system, so prepare for all your mods not to work, but prepare for some new mods in the future. But That's, there's actually some bad news, too. Ooh, let me hear it. Unfortunately, and I think this goes for PC as well, your saves do not carry over, my friends. Yeah, yeah. I, was gonna, I was planning on doing a new but, one anyway. I mean, at least you got shinier Skyrim now and whatever mods, you know, they made. Well, yeah. you're going to get asset mods on PS4 because you know how that went. And, uh, but, like, yeah, yeah, that's really sad. But I think Skyrim is one of those games, like, who doesn't have, like, a million different playthroughs anyway? And what's, what's one more? Like, yeah. what's one more? But, uh, I, th I mean, I don't think it's necessarily that bad. But, like, it is kind of sad that, like, oh, I can't transferred over but then again exactly. they're two different you know um like the the consoles are two different you know um uh technology and stuff so actually that's not, right it's david. not surprising david that's right speaking of skyrim valentino you had some news about the switch trailer we saw oh yeah oh man so it turns out Nintendo lied to us. <gasps> what? Shame, Nintendo. I'm still going to buy the Nintendo Switch. Tisk, tisk, tisk. But, but yeah, yeah, it turns out that um, the Nintendo Switch um, trailer, which was amazing, it was just that. It was just a trailer showing you the possibilities of the Switch. And, and I guess it's, it, I forgot how they said it, but um, it was like, they were just, the reason they used Skyrim was to show that Bethesda, a third-party studio, was, you know, they were in, you know, there was something going on there, that they were in mm -hmm. talks together, even though they hadn't actually made the game for that system. And, uh, I mean, that's real disappointing, but what they didn't say is they won't make a game, it's just that they haven't done so yet, so yeah. that leaves the door open. But, uh, and again, um, with the Nintendo Switch, they have, like, a, a huge list of, like, um, how, how did they put it? On the website they say, um, developers and middleware partners announcing support. And of course they got 505 Game, Activision, Arc Atlas, Bandai, um, Konami. Konami wants, who wants Konami? <laughs> but um, yeah, Marvelous Inc., um, Havoc, Square Enix, Take-Two, yada yada yada, Ubisoft. And, um, and yeah, yeah, it's a, and, and even here on the website, today's video incorporated short glimpses of representative gameplay to demonstrate the liberating nature of the Nintendo Switch home gaming system. Full game demonstrations, the list of launch window titles, as well as launch date, price product, blah, 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 will be shown and announced prior to the March launch. Mm. And they also had another press release that was like, um, they won't release any more hardcore information until at least 2017 but you know what this to me this reveal was good enough it'll keep me going but because they released more um breath of the wild um gameplay and oh my god that's it looks awesome. so great slow motion link i mean like uh that's 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 what that's what zelda needed some matrix bullet time in there <laughs> and um yeah so that's that from uh the nintendo switch Okay. So uh, I see you have another game announcement there. I'm, yeah. I, I'm not sure if I'm excited for this or not. And we talked about it beforehand, but like it's it's it's, it's 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 due to what went on in in in, in including the game. Um so basically 
Beyond Good and Evil 2 has officially been announced in pre-production. Beyond, beyond Good and Evil. And it's, it's, and what makes this odd is because the game was announced back in 2008. So, from 2008 until now, what was that? Uh, Shouldn't that have been like the pre-production? No, it wasn't. And so, um, according to this GameStop, uh, um, GameSpot article by um, Matt Paget, um, he, um, they released like a statement on that. And basically what were going on, um, uh, we got a quote saying, um, the game was playable with many prototypes. All videos were real time, but we had too much technical issues. We wanted planet exploration, space travel, cities. All this was supposed to be in the original Beyond Good and Evil. And instead of not doing the game of our dreams, we decide to return it to 2D, have fun with Rayman, and go back to work for Beyond Good and Evil 2. We still have lots of work, but now the tech is ready and the team is fantastic. Yeah. And, and so, yeah. Which console was Beyond Good and Evil on originally? The Xbox? Um, I'm, I think so. Think so. Okay. I remember it being a really good game, and I think Beyond Good and Evil could have a lot of, has a lot of potential. Not to be confused with, because uh, earlier when you when we started talking about it, it's just recently I realized this is not Beyond Two Souls. Yeah. Which is I, what I was thinking. Yeah, for a I know. There. Right? I, I, it, I, I gotta do that too. All right. Well, those are good times. But let's talk about some times, that whether good true. or bad. You know, they can be both in gaming, but they're times. They are emotional, memorable, intense moments in gaming. Valentino, are you ready to talk about what happened? It's the first step. Yeah. We'll get to you in a second, David. What is it? All right, so, yeah, like I said earlier, um, all my data from Mankind, Deus Ex, uh, Mankind Divided got deleted. It was awful. Uh, because I still don't know what happened, because I don't know if it was a Steam update or what. I just remember I tried to launch the game, and it was like, uh, yeah, you have to install it. <laughs> I'm like, okay. I thought you were like, launch, you mean delete? It's like, no. <laughs> Press OK to continue. Press cancel to continue. Yeah. But um, that's, that's with the, the game itself. What about in-universe? Let's go in-universe. And for me, um, obviously, I'll start, with, I'll, I'll start with the elephant in the room, The Last of Us. When you want emotion, that game has True. It. I mean, it, the, the voice acting was, was spot on. I mean, like, the characters felt real. They felt like people you could actually know. And I mean, like, we knew that, and here's the thing, that the brilliance of it all. We knew that Ellie was the main girl, was the main yeah. female. And when it opens up with his daughter, you already know Something what... That's, yeah, you already just know. throws you in that pool like, of just I, sadness and emotion. I thought that they were going to try to curveball us and say, oh, maybe she's somewhere else, and he just is escorting Ellie. Yeah. And, you know, and maybe they were going to meet up. But no, nah, they was like, yeah, she's, she's gone, mate. She, yeah. Yeah, she did. Violently, dead. in a terrible way. Yeah, and, and it was like, you knew it was coming, and the, the music went with it. Like the the voice, you know, it you could you could feel that. Like I, I felt like like um what's 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 the guy's name Trent or not Trey Troy Barker. I, I was Troy like Baker. I was like dude, it's just a game, dude. Stop crying. Yeah, man. I know. I thought he lost somebody for real, actually, but it was, it was so good. He he tried that. Like uh, that's a really interesting story acting wise. And just that took a lot of takes. And actually took a month later. He's like, no, we got to do it again. I'm ready for it because the director actually didn't like his first few takes. Oh wow! Oddly enough, that is fantastic. I mean, yeah, like, but I mean, it's just it's something. I like how acting is a very alive thing. But we're not talking about acting today. We're talking about video games. I'm talking about in world sadness. Let's go more sadness. Um, home world. That scene where you return to Karak, and it's... This is a spoiler alert. Spoiler alert if you haven't played Homeworld, if you plan on playing Homeworld, if you don't want... It's at the very beginning of the game, but just don't spoil it for yourself, honestly, because this is one of the best, one of the most impactful, intense, emotional moments, scenes in gaming, period. Honestly. So you return to Karak. I mean, I've warned you, by the way. So you return to Karak, and it's on fire. It's burning. It's about these people who, you know, they're not, Karak is not their home world. It's a desert world. So they leave, and they finally discover hyperspace travel. So they leave, you know, they, they make the first jump. Oh, cool, awesome. And they have 200,000 people 
in the ship ready to go. They come back, and it's on fire. It's burning. Oh my god. Their whole world is destroyed, and just the voice acting thing, you know, it's all gone. Like, Karak is burning. Like, it's so emotional. It's like, oh my gosh, everything they've known is gone. And then all of a sudden, it's like, they're under attack. And it's like, what's under attack? And you go over, and the people in the life pods are under attack. So the last people... The, the last people of your oh, world man. under attack. I was like, I gotta save them all. And I, I saved I saved right then and was like, I'm gonna save every single one of them. And if not, I'm just gonna restart at this point and just do it again. And I did. I saved them all the first try. But man, it was intense. And if you lose one, it says, you know, 200,000 gone. And it's like, wow. That's, oh, they give you a number. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And it's like, you know, this many gone. Um, what else? What else have we got, Valentino? Well, for me, this wasn't necessarily sad as it was just, it was so moving. And I'm going to take it back here. I'm going to go back to Black Ops. Yeah, that's right. Emotion in a, in a Call of Duty game. Mm -hmm. I absolutely loved the prison break scene when they were breaking out of Vortuga, when Reznov was basically telling um, uh, Mason the eight steps to the freedom. Mm -hmm. It was so great because, like, Everything about that was great. It's like you you could feel the rush. I mean, obviously yeah. it's a it's a war game, and you feel yourself. You're running through the tunnels. You got your gun first. You got your knife. Then you 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 hide behind a little train thing. As yeah, as, as, as is this as you yeah. yeah. by yeah. And then you, you got fire. all these firing at you, and it's like. And, and then even even when they first open up the door, those dudes know they were going to get shot. Yeah. But they didn't care. They was like. Some of us are getting out of here. And yeah. they just opened those doors. They got shot. And then you got the big black dude. He died. And it was like, and I was like, no. I was like, no. <laughs> and, it was, and it was amazing. And, and then. Isn't he the one that like came up behind you? Yeah, and just like hacked that dude from the back. And it's like, it's like, you could just like, you know when they talk about video games being violent. But like mm -hmm. for me, like, it wasn't the violence. It was just. Like, what they were fighting for. They were trying to get out of there Fourteen. because they were all, like, he said they were all, like, soldiers without armies or whatever. They come mm -hmm. from different places, and they came together to escape. And then, the, for me, in that particular moment, because everybody knows that's the part where Mason jumps from the train, and then Reznov can't come with them. But for me, it was before that, when they finally got to the motorcycles, and he was like, step eight. And then they do the motorcycle reveal, and he's like, freedom. And yes. like, I was like, dude, I just could see, like, oh. the American flag. It's the high eagle the flag. I, it, was, it, was so, it, it was such a great scene. The, the voice acting was great. Everything, the drama. I mean, like, it was fantastic. That's awesome. Was just great. All right, and what was that, Dave? What was your was moment? That? Yeah, 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 I remember too, that moment too. too. Yeah. But speaking of great. hype, speaking of hype in Portal, that moment, that first moment, like I've never had this. You know, in Portal, you had a level of interactivity you didn't have in some in a lot of games previously. It wasn't something very fleshed out in gaming yet. So like when you first time you drop behind a, uh, I, I you know drop behind one of the drones, which were adorable. You know, are you there? And it's <laughs> like you drop behind him. I have a box in my hand. And like just the fact that the strength of this my swinging the mouse is oh, actually translated to the strength of the game. I was just like, oh, just like destroying it. And that was one of the coolest, funnest, most hype moments I've really ever had in a game. And honestly, I want to talk about that next time. Let's talk about some hype moments in gaming. Oh, games yeah. where you're just like, yes, I am like you were the best game ever. Intense, awesome moments. But today we're out of time. So let's close them out, everybody. As always, thank you for joining us, and remember to game responsibly. Game responsibly. Don't touch me there, David. Come on, David. <laughs> All right.